Hello geeks and ghosts, as you can see, this is a very rust video, not in my best looking self, but whatever. I'm just too busy. Teacher, but I'm doing Nano. I'm doing a Villathon, and there will be videos about that and coming, but yeah, it's been of a, a bit of a hectic uh, kind of uh, time. Barely trying to keep my two videos a week uh, things. I did three videos last week. But it was because it wasn't unpacking, so it doesn't quite matter. And I may do throw in some other videos here and there, bonus videos, but we'll go for a Monday and a Thursday schedule for the moment. And there was this book I've read in October, October Country by Red Bradbury, uh, which I read for uh, Richard from Arguing the Horrors Talents for three months to Halloween. And for the month of October, I had to read a book with October the title. And it was either that or The Hunt for Red October. So guess which one I chose? I read this book very early in October. Um, I was probably done by October 10. And I was like, oh, I should do a review. But it was not quite easy. And uh, I'll tell you why. It's a book by Rick Bradbury, it's a short story collection, it was first published as Dark Carnival in 1946 and then it was republished with some extra stories in 1955, so that's quite an old book and it's a very interesting uh, book. Uh, it's my third Rick Bradbury book, I've also read uh, the two books everybody knows, uh, Something Wicked This Week Comes and Fire Night for 5-1. And he starts with the October country, that country where it is always turning late in the year, that country where the hills are fog and the rivers are mist, where noons go quickly, dusks and twilights linger and midnight stay. That country could boast of the main of cellars, subcellars, coal bins, closets, attics and pantries faced away from the sun. That country whose people are autumn people thinking only autumn thoughts whose people passing at night on the empty workshop sound like rain. Yeah, that's um, great. And what really stands out in this book is how well, how good the prose is. Uh, it feels like every word put in those short stories in this book is put there for a purpose. It's there after a lot of considered thought and it's there for an effect. It's really beautiful. The, pl the prose is beautiful and it can get a bit tiring to be honest reading so good prose um, because everything in this book is put in a way that there's a reason for that and you read and you're looking for the reason that's something that really puzzled me about this book it's a collection of weird tales it's not horror stories it's not fantasy stories it's not sci-fi stories it's weird tales Meaning that there are stories where there may be there may be some fantastical elements, maybe about um, you know common events, some ordinary stories. Ordinary, it's not. It's weird. Ordinary. I mean, the first story, the dwarf, is about a house of mirrors where a dwarf comes in when he's alone. He's looking himself in a mirror that makes him look tall. So it's a Pretty ordinary story, but still it's weird, that's the genre. That's the forefather of horror fiction, actually, the weird tale. It's a genre of its own, and Ray Bradbury writes in that tradition, and I was really surprised by how emotional those stories were. How they focus instead of the weird beings hanging from outside, like uh, Lovecraft's Other Gods, or Clark Arston's myths, uh, macabre, dark, age in prehistory. It's not that, it's about the inner world, the weird comes from inside, from um, the um, psychology of the people involved in those stories, how the weird affects them internally. I mean, there is a great story, some of the stories I really liked, where the small assassin, where a mother is afraid that her newborn is trying to kill her, it was probably the most horror, horrorous of the stories here. I really like the scythe, which is about a farmer who gets to be the Grim Reaper, it's a bit of a spoiler, and how he deals with that, and there's a lot about um, how people deal with the weird or how weirdness comes from people, I mean the second story, the next in line, 
is a bored couple who goes to Mexico. They see some mummies. The husband is a photographer. He's trying to take photos of the mummies, but his wife really freaks out seeing the mummies and she wants them to go away. And there is all this conflict between those two. The weirdness um, was something I wasn't expecting to read. And it was a very good throwback back then when there were not this genre specific stuff. It was more about the imagination and writing what you want to write as a or story author. And yeah, the, the writing was amazing, as I told you before. Uh, it was a bit exhausting at times, but uh, whatever. I just had to focus on the page and read it. And the prose is just uh, magnificent. I was uh, reading this book and as I was finishing, uh, Mike from uh, Mike's reading channel was talking about something with his wake ups. He was saying the prose was uh, magnificent and yeah, it was. It was magnificent to here. I was, you know, I was just reading the book and saying, like, yes, the prose is amazing. And there are 19 stories in this book. Uh, for me, if you want to read something uh, macabre and weird, and really well written, it's a great suggestion, a great book, this is a very weathered copy. I found in a thrift store in Athens, and it's from, it's the third rating from 1964. The stuff you find in uh, all three stores. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot, it was a macabre weird tale, perfect for um, any month, not just October, but you know, October is uh, as good as any month to read this one. Really great in, in July and still appreciate it because it's not an autumnal book at all. But yeah, there were some great stories. I enjoyed it. Really, I don't have much more to say about the book. I mean, I'm not the kind of guy who would take a short story collection and go through every single story and talk about it. But um, I definitely like the dwarf, the next in line, and I really liked how the, both of them have these uh, very inconclusive endings that. Uh, it was like they were cut, a big portion of the ending was missing and we had to find out what exactly happened. And that was uh, very eerie, it was really great, it gave a uh, vibe. As I told you, I like the small assassin a lot, it was very fun and it was the first horror story in this book. I liked uh, the scythe, oh yeah, and I, liked, I liked the emissary, the ending was just spooky, it was very spooky and horror-y and was the most Halloweenish of the stories. This one about a boy and his dog. And <laughs> what happens in the end it was oh, great. So yeah, uh, something I did not appreciate in the stories of this book it was that sometimes you went in and because of the elliptical writing, the way it were written, that every word counted, you were going into some stories and you didn't have a clear idea for what was happening, at least you progressed. I mean, the worst offender to me was Jack in the Box, which was um, by the end it was like, oh yes, it's the, this kind of story. I mean, it was written in the, for the 40s or 50s or whatever. I mean, that's awesome for um, time the written, but you know, it's just that kind of story that you've read again and again and uh, it has lost much of its effect at this moment. And um, which one was that with the two old men? Oh yeah, Task with Fire was another one of those, uh, what the fuck am I reading? Not all stories stand out. And that's um, something that was a bit of a pet peeve for Yeah, I have to go through a few of them, I remember, because some of them have blended in my head and I did uh, something that you should never do, read two uh, short story books um, back to back or together in tandem and I was reading that and I was reading a selection from Thomas Ligardi's Nightmare Factory which is an excellent horror collection and it was like it was really not helping me go through the stories fast because in my head stories blend together sort of it so yes that was uh, my review for the October Country hope it was not too rambly or I didn't did justice to the book because I had I was not quite sure what to say about honestly it was like um, it was good but I would read this book if I were you have read this book I would read this in between books a story here or there uh, as a palette cleanser between bigger books and enjoy it more but in my opinion it's a great short story collection macabre fiction for the entire family i guess 
and not too scary, not too spooky, just spooky enough to keep you the twins and keep your widow reader inside and say it. If you've read The October Country, um, please leave a comment with your opinion or what were your favorite stories. If you have a review of the book, I'll leave a link in the comment and I'll uh, definitely watch the review. And as always, stay spooky.